Thanks. Thanks to ABARES. Um, it's been a, a great opportunity and I've learnt to um, hone my PowerPoint skills, so we'll have to see how we go with this. Um, my presentation, I suppose, is quite a bit different to the previous presentations because I'm not talking about the managerial roles that take place on farm. I'm talking about foot soldiers. Um, we've got a horticulture business and um, for a lot of people that don't understand the peak seasonal requirements in horticulture. We grow, um, we're in the Yarra Valley, we've got 25 hectares of apples and for a lot of people they would think that um, that sort of a business, you know, 25 hectares, how can you make money out of that? But horticulture is quite a bit different. The Yarra Valley has a number of um, similar sized or slightly uh, larger farms harvesting apples and grapes. It also has a number of berry and cherry farms. It is Victoria's strawberry central area. Um, and we all need seasonal labour because we're all horticulturalists. Historically, the farms were small in size and the family did all the work. You might have a, another neighbouring farm that didn't have crops at the time and they might come and work for you during the season. But um, we've now consolidated our farms. We now have two farms. We had two farms, but they're in the one ownership. And so we've expanded. We actually haven't increased the size of our land, but we're actually producing probably 100% um, more than what those two farms did by themselves. And in addition to that, we've got new plantings and we'll see our um, crop area increase by another 100, perhaps 150% off, off a similar footprint. So we need quite a bit of labour. Um, our future plans, uh, we've got four children, none of them at the moment interested in, in coming back, but we probably see a different model in that we might like to take on our farm manager as a partner in our business, similar to what a lot of dairy farms do with their share farming practices. And I think there's a lot of different ways to look at at um, succession. My husband David is a sixth generation orchardist, whereas my claim is only to four. As was highlighted, we produce um, apples for the premium domestic market and we've now planted varieties that could see us get into export, but um, being a mainland producer, we have a little problem with an insect called fruit fly that keeps us out of most of the export market, and hopefully the efforts of our levies and horticulture innovation will see that problem solved into the future. In agriculture, and particularly in horticulture, there's some things that we need. Money, that goes without saying. Soil, water, sunlight, you've got to have some know-how about what you're doing. But for us, labour is the key. It doesn't matter how well and how much money you've got and how well you treat the soil. If you don't have the labour there when you need that crop to come in or you need pruning done or if you need fruit thinned and yes we do chemically thin but sometimes we need clean up as far as hand thinning all your efforts all your money has gone to waste uh, this is some of the guys that are presently working on the farm at the moment they've come in from Vanuatu so what's available to horticulturalists as far as labor You've got, your lo you've got local labour, you've got backpackers that can work at your place for up to six months, you've got the infamous labour hire contract teams, and we now have, and have had probably for the past uh, seven or so years, access to what's called the seasonal worker program, which is utilising workers from Pacific nations. Our business has used these workers to varying degrees, but now we're pretty much wedded to the seasonal worker program. This is um, our typical field labour needs during the year, so um, perhaps if you look at July, August, we hardly need anyone, and that's when our permanent staff have their holidays. Uh, then we start ramping up, you have um, 
flowering happening, uh, chemical thinning. Big issue for us is birds and hail. We put nets on our properties. And then we hit March, April, and it is manic time because we have um, basically 70% of the crop coming in in those two months. Just go back to that previous slide. Um, local labour, grey nomads basically don't come into our area anymore. Um, they, they'd love to have a job in our packing shed, but being out in the field, you know, perhaps 40 degrees or maybe down at minus two in the morning, it's not really um, an ideal place. Also, the advent of 24-7 um, type of shopping, a lot of willing workers in the local area now are around at Safeway starting at six o'clock in the morning. It's a great place to work, great conditions. Labour hire, we trade that. Um, we've all seen the media reports about labour hire. We basically felt that our business was on the line. We couldn't trust perhaps the conditions that they were employing their workers under, even though we had signed contracts with them. Backpackers, um, Yarra Valley is a pretty cool place in the autumn. Um, they don't like staying in, in minus uh, degrees. It's, it's hard work. They get together their couple of thousand dollars in a couple of weeks and most of them when they come into Australia have a plan. They know that they're going to Sydney, they know that they're going to CES Rock, they're over to Perth. They're not wanting to stay on a farm for six months even though they can. So we now look at the seasonal work plan. We um, heard about it at an agribusiness dinner and you've got to sort of take up these opportunities when they come. And this actually gives our business certainty. It means that we can manage a resource, one of the most valuable resources in our business, and that's the labour. We can actually plan what we're going to do. Some of the guys out there harvesting their some jazz, most of the pictures are jazz. So how do you get started with this program? Budgets. It's not just all about money. When you're talking about labour, it's time and tasks. And we, for years, accurately recorded the, not just the cost of our labour, but how long it took to do things and when these things had to be done. We also have our yield records and our variety management records. With the seasonal work program, you have to guarantee an average of 30 hours a week for your workers. So it's really important that you know how many workers you need and when. You need accommodation. For us, we had a consolidation of family farms. So we've got a couple of good quality large homes available to um, house our workers. Previously, they were rented to private tenants. With the seasonal worker program, you need separate bathrooms for males and females, and that is an issue. And as far as transport, because we have two farms, some farms have buses, but we're a bit more low key. We have bikes. Um, to join up in the program, you have to be an approved employer. You have to be approved by the Department of Labor, and now, pretty scary title, the Department of Immigration and Border Protection. Um, you have to become an approved sponsor with them. It's a bit of red tape, and there's a bit more along the line, but if your end goal is resource management, the resource being labour, which is crucial to your business, and in fact to your sanity, it's well worth the red tape. Um, when we first applied, it does take some time. We didn't get approved in time, so we used another approved employer to assist us. And we, at the moment, have six workers from Vanuatu on the farm, and last night I got the visas through for the other six, so we're right for March. Um, the other thing you have to do is work out where are you going to source the workers? I think there's 10 Pacific nations currently involved in the scheme. We chose Vanuatu. Uh, it's up to you as an employer who you're going to choose, but we felt 
that Vanuatu was a country that didn't have a lot of other economic resources available to it, and this was a, a significant factor in their GDP. So each employment cycle, you have to advertise. Three months before you need any workers, the ads have to go out. Um, it's subject, this is what they call labour market testing, and this is to ensure that no labor, local labour is excluded from work opportunities on your farm. Um, we offer positions, but it's a little bit unrealistic this three months before the jobs come available. If you're a willing worker, are you going to sit on your backside waiting for this work to become available? No, you're out there looking for other jobs and often when the time comes they're not available. You need to prepare a recruitment plan and get that approved by the Department of Employment. And we're like, what are you going to do if you have a, a crop failure? Where are these workers going to work? Because you're responsible for them. You have to work out what accommodation you're going to have available to them, how they're going to travel around, how they're going to do their shopping. Um, you need to develop your terms and conditions of employment. You send letters of offer over. Then you, once you get your recruitment plan approved, uh, visas, which cost you $365 per person. Um, because we're choosing Vanuatu, we need medicals. You have to arrange health insurance. You have to arrange pastoral care. Then you get your visas, like I did last night. I need these workers in 14 days. So tomorrow I go home and I'm booking flights and hopefully they're not going to be too expensive. And I just wish we had a bit more time to actually book the flights because the cost of the flights are actually reimbursed by the worker to the, to the amount over and above $500. So if I have to buy an airfare that costs me $1,200 to come in from Vanuatu, they're paying me back $700. But if I could have booked it four weeks ago, I might have been able to get an $800 fare. So. But then that's the system at the moment. The benefits, I have got resource management, oh, it's a bit different, <laughs> I told you I was learning on the PowerPoint, it's planned and it's on time. I have, sorry, I have confidence to grow my business and my staff morale, the permanent guys are really happy with the scheme. The only thing is that the farm manager insists that everybody barrack for Hawthorne. <laughs> Um, but he's fantastic. He's taken the scheme to heart. He went back and um, helped them after Cyclone Pam. We have great support from our pastoral care team, and these are some of the feel-good factors we get out of being within the scheme. We have cultural exchange. We develop our seasonal workers. Some of them have gone back and purchased buses, built new homes. There's community tool schemes that they've arranged within themselves, solar water pumps. It's just a great then we actually feel as though it's a win-win for our business. And now the scheme has been expanded to other areas of agriculture and I would encourage other farmers to really think about the scheme because it is a, gra a great feeling to be helping someone out and it's also great for our business. Thank you.